How's it going everyone? Welcome back to our next episode on how to create JavaScript. Now in this lesson, we're going to talk about something called properties and methods within JavaScript. And properties and methods are something that we use constantly when it comes to JavaScript. I know that I say that all the time for these lessons, that we use it all the time, but in this case, it's especially true because properties and methods are what actually makes our JavaScript do something to uh, the data that we have inside our JavaScript. So as you can see in the example I have in front of me, I created a variable that I call item, which is equal to bottle of water, which is a string. And right underneath it, I have a console log, but I haven't done anything to the console log yet. So just to give a short explanation of what exactly a property and a method is, a property is a way for us to get certain meta information about a object. Now variables and arrays are type of objects, so we can do that to them. And methods are functions that belong to the object that allow for us to do something to the data inside the object, such as a variable or an array. So what I want to do is I want to show you how exactly these properties and methods work by showing you a couple of examples here. Now, just to start with, I'm just going to use a variable to demonstrate these different examples. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this variable and I'm going to console lock it inside the browser. So I'm just going to go ahead and save it, go inside the browser. And as you can see, we have bottle of water inside the, the console down here. Now what we can also do is we can use a property on this object. So what I can do is I can go inside right after we uh, grab the item variable here. I can say punctuation, mean that now we're going to add a property or method behind it that is going to do something to this variable here. So to give an example of a property, we can go ahead and use something called length that is going to give us the length of this specific string here. So if we were to go ahead and go inside the browser, you can see we get 15 because right now we have 15 uh, pieces of characters inside the string here. So we were to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, which should match it. Now it is also going to count the spaces. So it will be 15 in total, including the spaces in here. Now. This is an example of a property. And again, a property is a way for us to get information regarding this specific variable here. So we're just getting the length of it. Now, a method on the other hand, like I said, allow for us to actually do something to the data inside the actual container. So if we were to go ahead and go right after the item, punctuation, because that's what we need to add, and declare a specific method called index of. Index of. Now, do you notice that when we use a method that has multiple words inside of it, the second word is not going to be separated with a space. Uh, it's just going to start off with a capitalized letter. So index is going to be non-capitalized. And then the first letter in the next word, which is of, is going to be a capitalized O. Now, after we define a method, we always need to include a pair of parentheses because this is something that defines that we're now using a method uh, or a function, which we'll talk about later, uh, to a specific object. So what index of actually does is that it give us a index position of a certain piece of data inside the object that we have up here. So if we were to go ahead and say, I want to get the position of a certain character or a certain word inside this uh, string up here, and go ahead and say we have a string called of, and I want to get the position of it. So if we were to go inside the console, you can see we get seven. So if we were to count, we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, including the space, mean that it now gave us the position of a certain letter or sentence inside the string up here. So this is one example. To give you another example, we could go ahead and use something called a substring. Now, substring does something slightly different. So we'll just go ahead and say substring. Uh, this one allows for us to cut off a certain part of the string or the object that we have on top of us, meaning that I can go ahead and say we want to uh, start at a index position of seven. And then I want to keep the rest of the string until a certain point. So I could say afterwards, we want to keep it till nine, which would give us just the, the string called of inside uh, the console because I'm cutting everything up until the seventh position. And then I'm going to keep the rest of it until the ninth position, which is right here, and then cutting the rest of it off. So if we were to save this, go inside the console, you can see we get off inside the console. Now, Another example here, I'm just going to give you a few examples so you can sort of get the idea here. Another example we could use would be to use something called replace. So we were to go in here and say replace, and then go inside the parentheses. We can go ahead and take a word from inside uh, the string up here, like water, 
that has to be a string of course and then I want to replace it with juice then if we were to go inside the browser you can see that we now get a bottle of juice instead of water so we can do a bunch of things when it comes to these different uh, methods here now the last one I'm going to show you when it comes to variables is one called two uppercase and again this is actually three different words two uppercase so in this case we would say two non-capitalized upper is going to be capitalized and then case again is going to be capitalized at least at the beginning there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that we just want to delete whatever's inside the parentheses and then it's just going to capitalize all the letters inside the string we have up here so we're to just go ahead and save it refresh the browser you can see that we get bottle of water but it's all capitalized so these are some of the methods we can use when it comes to variables now there's a lot of different methods we can use in order to do a bunch of things when it comes to variables and arrays and I can't show you all of them this episode so I will go ahead and link a list in the description of this video where you can see both properties and methods when it comes to uh, both arrays and uh, variables so now we talked about variables let's go ahead and talk about when we use these on arrays instead of variables so if we were to go ahead and just replace our variable here with the array example we had from the previous episode now what i want to do to start with before we use any kind of properties or methods is i want to just go ahead and console log the actual array inside the browser and this actually needs to be items not item going back inside the console you can see that we get the actual array listed out inside the console now a really funny thing when it comes to arrays inside a console is that we can in fact see the different properties and methods we can use on the array inside the console here so you'll notice that we have this little arrow next to the array we can actually go ahead and click that and then you can see we get first of all the different index numbers of uh, the data inside the array so we have 0 1 2 and then underneath here we do actually get the properties that we can use so in this case we have length and it actually gives us the property value which is 3 because when it comes to arrays we don't get the number of characters we do actually get the number of array indexes um, so we can also use length if I were to go in here and say dot length we can also use that when it comes to arrays so if we were to just go back here go inside the the console and go ahead and grab the list again you can also see we get something down here at the bottom if we were to extend that you can see different methods we can use inside the array here now there's a lot of them and again there's going to be a list in the description of this video but we're just going to take a few examples from this list here now if we were to go back inside my code we're going to go ahead and try out a method called join so if we were to go inside the code here and say dot join parentheses because this is a method now this one actually goes ahead and takes this specific uh, array and combines all the different uh, indexes we have into one string. So if we were to go inside the console here, you'll see that instead of having uh, different indexes, we do actually get just one string of the data that we had inside the array. You're gonna notice that we don't actually have uh, spaces in between the commas, which would look a little bit nice aesthetic wise. Uh, we do also have one called two string we could use that will automatically create the space but the cool thing about using join is that we can go inside the parentheses and add a couple of parameters like we did with the variable examples now in this case we can say what we want to include in between the data inside the uh, inside the indexes inside the array so instead of comma we could add something else like we want to add a space dash space save it and then you can see we get this in between the data instead of the default comma we could also if you want to use the comma we could say comma space save it and then you can see we get the default comma space value we usually have in between data inside uh, a website and you can use any sort of character in between here if you want to you can use pipes you can use ampersands you can use a bunch of things and then you can see we get these different symbols in between uh, the list here so the next example i want to show you is something called pop and i also want to show you one called push so pop actually goes in and removes one piece of data from inside the array so if we were to go in here and say instead of join I'm going to say pop parentheses it's going to go ahead and remove one of the data from inside the array which is going to be the last index we have inside the actual array so right now it's going to actually remove 
uh, the one called true. If I were to just console log this, it is only going to show me which data it's going to remove from the array. So if we were to go inside the browser, you can see that it actually writes out true because that's the data it removed from the array. So if we were to just go ahead and say, instead of console logging it, I'm going to go in between the array and the console log, and then I'm going to use the method. So I'm just going to refer to the variable, or the, the <laughs> So I'm just going to refer to the array called items and then say dot pop, which means that we now remove the, the last index. Then afterwards, I just want to console log items inside uh, the, the actual console inside the browser. So right now you can see that we just have bottle and four, and we just have two indexes inside the array. Now we could also combine these and say we want to say dot join parentheses and then go ahead and do that. And then in this case, we use two different types of methods inside uh, this one example here. So now we just removed a piece of data and we included some spacing and made it into a string in one piece of code. So this is something we can do. Now, when it comes to using push, we can do the exact same thing. So if we were to say push, it is going to do the same thing, but it's going to include a piece of data instead of removing it. So I can go and say we want to push in a piece of data. It can be any kind of data, a string, number, something. So what I want to do is I want to add juice as a string. And I'm just going to go ahead and console log push instead of uh, the other one. And I'm also going to go ahead and include juice inside uh, the console log example here. Now, the first line up here is just going to add juice, which means that if I want to see this inside the full array, I just need to console log items in order to see this. So you can see we now have bottle, for, true, and juice. Now, if I were to console log uh, the whole thing with the dot push, then it's going to show me the index number of where push was inserted inside the array, which is at the end. So it will essentially just give me the, the total number of uh, data inside the array or indexes inside the array. So we're to save this, go inside the browser, you can see we get five because we have five pieces of index inside this array here. Now, before we continue to the next lesson, there's something that's very important for me to mention about these properties and methods here. Now, properties and methods are built into the JavaScript language, meaning that we don't need to create them first in order to use them inside our code. Now, properties, like I said at the beginning, is just basic information about the object, but a method is a function that actually does something to the actual object. Now, a function is basically a block of code that does something specific. And a function is actually something we can create ourselves as a user. And when it comes to methods, it's actually just a function that's related to the actual object. But when we create our own functions, we just call them functions. And these are what we also call user-defined functions and properties and methods of what we could call built-in functions. So without making this too confusing and too complicated, what we're going to talk about in the next episode is something called functions. And it's something you will use constantly inside a website when you create any sort of JavaScript code for the website. So after we learn about functions, I think we're ready to start talking about how to actually do something inside a website using JavaScript, because up until now, all the lessons you've seen so far has been more or less knowledge based, meaning that we haven't actually done any sort of practical examples when it comes to JavaScript inside a website. So hopefully within the next couple of lessons, we'll start learning something that we can actually use inside a real website. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.